Welcome back. Today we're going to be tackling how to have a mask and still have a costume despite no actual trick-or-treating. So, beginning with my normal COVID mask pattern, I picked it out of my pile of patterns, threw it down on top of the little piece of fabric that I had. Today's piece of fabric is an actual child's costume. It came with a mask, which I decided to actually give away. I don't have a lot of use for it, it didn't fit my face. I got it from the thrift store for $4.99, so here it is, all attached, original packaging. We have the cardboard, you know which character it is, it's exciting, it comes with a mask, partial hanger. <laughs> and while it's nice to have all the information about which cartoon character this originally was, it doesn't help us out a lot, so here we go. Cutting it apart, making sure that we preserve the centerpiece that had all the little buttons down the middle of the shirt, being careful to not cut into the collar that was on this, it was made out of pleather and also being careful to cut around these sleeves just in case I decide to use them later. So here I was cutting outside of the little strip that had the buttons. You can see I've also preserved the black stripping that was on the outside of this band of buttons. So as I was going along, I cut out the front piece of my masks from the front of the costume, flipped my costume over and found out there was a perfectly preserved center seam that I could have made my mask from so live and learn always check both sides of your project because maybe there's a smarter faster way to get the exact same job done so here i'm laying out my pattern both front and back firstly putting my front and back pieces together so that i can cut them out as one So here I'm aligning both the diamonds, the pattern, the white diamonds, the black diamonds, the red diamonds. I wanted to make sure that this was symmetrical along the face because once you make it into a mask, you have to remember the face is not flat. It matters where we put markings, lines, decorations, patterns, if you want it to be flattering because the more symmetrical a person's face is, the more attractive they are. Same theory applies to making masks. Instead of cutting straight into my mask, I ended up tracing it using a silver gel pen, allowing for seam allowance, sitting out about a centimeter from the edge of my pattern, also allowing for any adjustments that I wanted to make because the pattern of this fabric is so specific I can only cut it once. It's better to cut it bigger and make sure it fits by contouring it after to make it smaller. So as I cut this out, I did keep those clips on the final edge there still attached because I wanted to make sure that when I went to my sewing machine, the diamonds that I had originally lined up were still intact, still lined up, still symmetrical, and then trimming down the little button patch just because I felt that later on we might actually use this. And I wanted to keep it something that I could use later, but also keep it already ready to go should I need to stitch it in because at this point I hadn't decided if I was going to glue it or stitch it onto the front of the mask. And once you take it to your machine, you line it up and sew as carefully as you can, making sure to keep the diamonds or whatever pattern you're working with straight so that it's still symmetrical on the face once you finish. side of the mask, just a simple piece of 100% green cotton cut in the same shape as the top or front piece of the mask. 
So lining up the front and back, and look how symmetrical that turned out. So carrying on though, lining up the front and the back, laying out the elastics. I measured my own head as the mask was for myself, so I just made sure to make the top elastic fit around the top of my head where I would be keeping my ponytail as an anchor for the mask and the elastic, and then measuring around the back of my neck for the lower elastic. So here you can see I'm making sure to backstitch each time I hit a corner where I would cut the strings and move the work. Sometimes I was able to just bring up the presser foot, pivot the project, and then carry on from there. So it's very, very simple. I do like that the Brother Sewing Machines make this easier, as there's one button designated for just needle going up and down, and one button for just presser foot going up and down. I went three sides or three quarters of the way around the mask project, making sure to leave a hole so that I could flip the project inside out and insert the nose piece, just for reinforcement. There's a lot of other tutorials that talk about how to reinforce it. I made sure to just use cotton thread, wire fur across the nose, or something that would be metal and bendy. I clipped it in place, and here you can see it's all laying flat, flipped inside out, and then the bottom hole, which was open to insert the nose piece, has been clipped shut, which I will top stitch shut as well. Now each time I hit a corner, I would pivot it under the machine. I did eventually switch though to using red thread for top stitching after having finished the inner seams with a neutral thread, which you can see previously in this video. I thought that the red sort of gave it more of a Harley Quinn feel, and I didn't want to step away from the actual purpose or theme of the mask, especially since I don't want the thread lines to be distracting. Once I had finished my top stitching, I pinned the corners in in pleats so that it would fit tighter along my face. Once I had done this, after stitching them in place, I removed the pins, tried it on, made sure it still fit good and then trimmed down the threads, making it nice and neat. Then we lined up the front ribbon that I'd saved from the front kid's costume shirt. So I decided not to use the tool after all and went ahead with pinning that spotted ribbon in place and trying on my mask to see if I liked the positioning. So here I've got it clipped in place and then I went ahead using my E6000 glue and put the ribbon down onto the front of the mask using only the glue, but using pins to keep it in place while it dried. I also decided to cover up some of the glue marks that had come through the t-shirt fabric just using white acrylic paint from Michaels. And I took a black pen and I colored in the edges just to make it a little neater. And you're done! Enjoy your brand new mask. It is a costume fit for people who love costumes. <laughs>